judge to stand. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets may be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people Israel. Sirach chapter 36, verse 18. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I want to welcome you all back to this Mass. i just thinking about this. When I say welcome you back, that sounds like it's a TV show. This is not. This is worship. We're praying to the Lord. And it is vitally important that... Um, Maybe you say this too often as we enter into the um, into this time of, of prayer. You can, for whatever reason, you probably have been prevented from entering into the space of prayer, right? The into your church um, because of sickness or because of things being shut down. Um, but you're not prevented. We're not prevented from entering into the time of prayer. And one of, one of the things we know that God does is not only does He sanctify places. There are places that are set aside um, to to reveal His presence even more. But also there's times that Christ, that our God, has set aside. And this is one of those times. So regardless of where you are at this moment, um, regardless if this is on a, a big screen or on your phone, regardless if you're in your car stuck somewhere or if you are at home or even maybe just parked outside the church because you can't get inside the doors, this time is sanctified. This time is filled with the Lord. And this is the time that we get to give to God, give back to God. Because that's what worship, the heart of worship is this, is offering the sacrifice to give back to God. And so as we prepare to give back to God, we first ask for him to once again give his mercy back to us as we acknowledge our sins and call out for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You live to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy Grant that we may serve you with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice in supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me the day I called. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The cords of death encompassed me. The snares of the netherworld seized upon me. I fell into distress and sorrow, and I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, save my life. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Gracious is the Lord and just. Yes, our God is merciful. The Lord keeps the little ones. I was brought low and he saved me. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. For he has freed my soul from death, 
my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk walk before before the the Lord in the the land land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, You have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you from my works. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 8, verses 27 through 35. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi, Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this, he turned around and looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. He summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel, We'll save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I invite you to have a seat. So um, this is, I was going to say this is the season for this question, but basically when you live on a, on a campus, like basically the conversation almost always comes down, back to, so what's your major? Um, and, and not just what's your major, but what do you plan to do with that kind of thing? Or um, regardless of if someone is, you know, a fourth year senior or a fifth year senior or a sixth year senior, the kind of the idea is what's your plan after graduation? In fact, I mean, it's all about plans or it's all about uh, I'm here to do something else. I'm here to have it because I have a plan. I'm here because um, there's something else I want to do with my life other than just simply be right here. And we're expected, obviously, to have that kind of figured out in some ways. In fact, it's so interesting talking with medical students because a lot of times they have to have an idea of what their specialization is going to be before they even do rotations, which is kind of backwards a little bit, but they have to, they're expected to have some kind of plan, even with not a ton of information. Um, and that, again, that's not a bad thing. Obviously, it's reasonable. It's responsible to have a plan um, because if this is my life, then I should probably plan for it. If this is going to be um, my future, I should be ready for it. If this is, this is my family, if this is, these are my friends, I should um, be able to take care of them. So not a bad thing. But in the midst of all these plans, in the midst of all having like, this is my life, my plan, my future, my family, I came across this quote. It said this. It said, uh, we must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. We must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. Because we all have our plans, but we have to be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. That, that quote is from a man named Dietrich Bonhoeffer. If you know who Dietrich Bonhoeffer is, he, he um, was an incredible human being. He was a, a German Lutheran theologian who was born in 1906 in Germany. And it's funny how that happens sometimes. I had, uh, he grew up basically your typical Christian in Germany at that time. You know, everyone more or less around them would be Christian. And he kind of was like nominal, you know, Christian in name. But at some point, I mean, he actually also, he had kind of some famous family members. His dad was a famous psychologist, Dr. Karl Bonhoeffer. Um, he had other family who were in kind of higher up in the government of, of Germany. Um, at some point, something must have happened where he was convinced about the idea of God. And so he set about studying theology. In fact, he, uh, he got his first PhD in theology at the age of 20, 
So kind of a slow learner there. <laughs> And I mean, he also knew seven languages that he could speak and write fluently and, and um, so no big deal. But his job for a long time, his job was to think about God. Like for a long time, his job was to talk about God. And then in the early, his early 20s, something happened where he didn't just take the idea of God seriously, but something changed in his life where he, he began to take the reality of God seriously. What he had done is he, he had left Germany, he come, came to the United States to, to study theology. And um, on Sundays, on weekends, he would go around to different churches in New York City and he found, to listen to what they were preaching about. And he found himself completely, thoroughly unimpressed by the gospel being preached in most you know, mainline Christian churches. He went up to Harlem and he started attending these, a number of uh, black Christian churches and he said it was there that he heard the gospel proclaimed. That here is Jesus Christ, who is the only begotten Son of God, who came to take our sins upon himself. He died, he suffered, he died, he rose again from the dead. He's given life, the Holy Spirit, to you and to me, if we're willing to accept it. And, and some, it, does, it lit a, a, little, a little flame inside Dietrich Bonhoeffer's life, where, again, up to that point, he had taken the idea of God seriously. But at this moment, he took the reality of God seriously. Like, the Bible completely came alive for him. Prayer was a dynamic experience. He had a, a living relationship with the true and living God. And it was almost like this. It was almost like his whole life, he had been answering the first question Jesus asks in today's gospel. The first question Jesus asks in today's gospel is, who do people say that I am? That's what a theologian does. Here's all the, here's all the possibilities. Here's who you could be, Jesus. Here's who you are, God. But then it was when he went to Harlem, when he came to the New York City, to the United States, and he encountered Jesus himself. It was as if Jesus himself was asking him, but you, Dietrich, who do you say that I am? And what had been this theory, important theory, serious theory, became incredibly personal. It's just, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting because in the gospel today, when all those answers are given, John the Baptist, Elijah, one of the prophets, if Jesus was one of those people, Elijah, John the Baptist, one of the prophets, that would mean he would have a relative claim on his listeners. I mean, he would have a relative claim in the lives of the people that he was teaching. But the answer, the actual answer is, you know, Simon Peter says, you're the Messiah. In Matthew's gospel, he goes on to say, not only are you the Christ, he says, you're the son of the living God. And this changes everything. If Jesus is just another prophet, he's just another holy person, then he has a relative claim on me. But if Jesus truly is the Messiah, if he truly is the son of the living God. He does not have a relative claim on my life. He has an absolute claim on my life. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer experienced that claim when he encountered the real Jesus. And it changed everything in his life. As I said, his, his prayer was now a living relationship. When he read the Bible, when he read the Bible, it was, it was God's word jumping off the page into his heart and transforming the way that he lived his life. His mission was lived differently. And he returned to Hitler's Germany a different person. You know, and again, for us, until that question is answered, who do you say that I am for us? Until that question is answered by us, Jesus can be important. It's a big deal in my life. He can be really important. He can be important, but he will only be relatively important. I'll say that again. Until we answer that question, who do you say that Jesus is? Jesus can be important, but he will only be relatively important. He'll, he could have a claim on our lives, but he will only have a relative claim. And I can say, I believe, and that's good. But we have to realize what faith isn't. Faith has to be lived, not merely believed. Faith has to be lived, not merely believed. That's why in James chapter 2 today, the second reading, right? Um, James makes a point. Faith on its own, just belief on its own, is worthless. Belief on its own, just saying, I believe in Jesus, I believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all those things on their own are useless. In fact, James even goes on further. He says, faith without works is dead. Faith that simply, faith, faith that simply belief doesn't do anything. It is completely and utterly lifeless. It's completely and utterly useless. In fact, James goes on to say, what good is it if I say I believe and don't live like it? I think about this. What good is it if I say I, don't, I, say, say I believe but don't live like it? Like, who, who does that help? Does that help the world? Doesn't help the world at all. Does it help people, people around me? Doesn't help the people around me at all. Does it even help me? It does, it's, in fact, <laughs> it not only does not only help me, but if I say I believe, 
Here's what James says. We didn't hear this in today's reading, but I always like bringing it out because it's right here in chapter two. He says this. He says, you believe that God is one. This is right after um, what Emmeline had read for us. He said, you believe God is one. You do well. <laughs> like he's basically saying, that's, that's nice. I mean, I'm proud of you. Here's a little cookie. Um, he says, you believe God is one. You do well. But even the demons believe that and tremble. So here I am. I could say, I believe in God. And St. James would look at me and say, great, you're now at the level of demon. <laughs> and he goes on to say, do you want proof, you ignoramus, which is another reason why I really like this. Do you want proof, you ignoramus, that faith without works is useless? Faith without works is useless. And some might say, well, it makes me feel better. <laughs> like the, the idea that I, the, the, the belief that God exists, the belief that God knows my name, the, the, the belief that, that Jesus Christ has died for me, that I, some, there are a lot of people a lot of people who like the idea of God's love. And that's nice. But that offers consolation, not salvation. It does not, does not offer anything more than consolation. It's useless. In fact, I saw this guy online. Um, he's kind of a, hey, uh, make money a lot. He's kind of a money guy. I don't know how it came across my algorithm, but there it was. And he was saying that he was talking to a billionaire and the billionaire was talking about the value of money. He said, you know, actually money is useless. And this man who's devoted a lot of his life to making money, talking to a billionaire says, what? Are you, what? He says, yeah, money is useless. And he says, explain this to me. He says, money is useless unless it is used. Just paper. Just sitting there in a bank, sitting there in your wallet, sitting there under your mattress. Money is useless unless it's used. And the same thing is true with faith. Our faith is useless unless it's used. Faith must be lived, not merely believed. And let's go back, so let, let's go back to the gospel here. This is so, so cr critical because Jesus, after there's a statement of faith, right? The statement of belief that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus not only predicts his own passion, but then he says these words. It's so powerful. We need to hear them for us today. He says, if you want to be my disciple, and Matthew's gospel, or Mark's gospel today says, if you wish to, but if you, if you want to, if you want to be my disciple, and now I want to pause here because this is really important. We have to realize that Jesus gives us the choice. He doesn't say you have to be, to, to be my disciple. He doesn't say you're born as my disciple. He doesn't say you, you inherited your faith from your parents because, you know, they were really devout Catholics. If he says, it, basically, if you want to, if you don't want to, go ahead and live your life. I mean, not that he doesn't care, but basically he's saying that, yeah, um, you have a claim on your own life if you want. If you want to walk away, you can. But if you want to be my disciple, so it's your choice. If you want to be my disciple, because if I am who I say I, say I am, I have an absolute claim on your life. So if you want to be my disciple, deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. And I just want to talk about one of those aspects, the deny yourself one. Um, because I, I think for, for years, maybe my entire life, I've always perceived that as being a little self-denial. Yeah, I mean, just having some self-control. Like if you want the extra piece of cake, but out of love for Jesus, I'm not going to have the extra piece of cake, that kind of thing. Self-denial, more discipline. Um, that's not what it means. That's not what that word deny means. It's actually, it's a, it's a legal term from the ancient world. That means renounce. It, it, it means complete disownment. So you have something that's yours, something that is mine. I have a claim to this inheritance. Well, deny, renounce, renounce it. I have a claim to my property. Renounce it. I have a claim to my life. Renounce it. I have a claim to my future. Renounce it. I have a claim to my plans. Renounce it. <laughs> Anything that I would look at and say, that's mine, Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, you have to renounce all claims, every claim to my life, everything that was mine now becomes not mine. So I look at my inheritance, I, that's not mine. Look at my property, that's not mine. Look at my life, that's not mine. Look at my plans, it's not mine. Look at my day, here's, here's, this is my Sunday. Mm -mm, it is not mine. That my claim is to be, my claim about my life is surrendered to the absolute claim of Jesus. I mean, think about this. This is what it is to be a Christian. This is what it is to have faith, is to be able to look at my life, every aspect of my life, and say, not mine. My time, not mine. My resources, not mine. 
my plans, not mine, my future, not mine. One of the steps, one of the conditions of discipleship is I have to be willing to renounce everything that I had previously had a claim over. This is the last thing. Um, obviously, that's a, that's a big deal. Uh, and that's going to take practice. It's going to take time. It's going to take training. So here's my invitation for all of us this week is practice, not mine. <laughs> like rehearse faith or train faith. What I mean by that is um, what we can do is we can choose to do things that remind me that my life is not mine. Okay, over the course of this week, we can choose to do things that remind us, okay, it reminds me that my life is not mine. And the, and the, the three classic ways we remind us ourselves that our life is not ours is uh, fasting, prayer, and giving. I mean, that, those are three ways that we can constantly and continually build into our lives this truth that, no, uh, fasting, this food here, it's not mine, it's a gift. Prayer, my time, my day, my plan, my schedule, it's, that's not my time. I could, I could not, I cannot extend my life by one second. This is not my time. I'm going to give it to the Lord. Giving. Someone asks for something, just okay. It's not mine, so I can freely give it. And even, even this willingness this week, this is training in faith. This is practicing not mine. Is an openness and a willingness to being interrupted. Remember Dietrich Bonhoeffer? He had said that. He had said. We must always be ready to be interrupted by God. You know, I mentioned he came back to Germany a different person. He was a different person. He was a changed man. So much so, he was so changed uh, that his faith wasn't just something he intellectually believed, but something he was dynamically living, that Hitler saw him as a threat. Now think about that. When was the last time you looked at a Christian and said, you are so holy, you are so sold out for the Lord that you, you threaten evil in this world. Hitler thought, saw him as a threat and so he arrested him on, on charges of conspiracy, which he actually was part of, <laughs> uh, but you were trying to topple a regime, so that's okay. Um, I'll give him a pass on that one. What, how Bonhoeffer lived, Bonhoeffer lived the last months of his life, last years of his life in prison, is he lived it practicing faith. He lived it training, not mine. He would get up early and he would take that time. So this is, my, this is my life. I can't extend it by one second. So I'm going to use the time that's been given. It's not mine for prayer. Comforts that he was offered. Um, he chose to take cold showers. He chose to take this. He chose to take cold showers in prison. I would have think. I would have thought that the penance was of being in prison would be enough. But he's like, nope. This is not mine. It's not my life. These are not my comforts. Training in faith. He chose to fast on certain days as a way to, again, again, continually rehearse, not mine, to train, not mine, to practice faith. I remember someone said about him, they said uh, that Bonhoeffer, he could only stand against evil because he belonged to Jesus. Not just because he believed in Jesus, but because he belonged to Jesus. And when evil came, so many others could not stand against it. But he could. And when evil comes again, because it always does, there will be those who are not ready to stand against it. Many people who believe, but don't necessarily belong to Jesus. When that day comes, the only people who will be able to stand against evil, when that day comes, when we get to see the Lord in goodness face to face, the only people who will be ready will be those who practiced faith, who rehearsed not mine, and who trained in not simply believing, but had spent their life living the walk of Jesus Christ. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith that we do believe and ask God to help us live. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our Father does love us in our weakness, in our need, we now approach him with all of our, our prayers. <clears throat> that the church will always reflect the generous love, mercy, and compassion of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as our nation recalls the attacks of September 11th, we may renew our gratitude for the liberty we enjoy in America under God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who serve in ordained ministries in the church may be living examples of Christ and inspire the faithful to transform the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the strength to, to deny ourselves and put others first, to welcome strangers, to visit prisoners, and to, and to protect unborn children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are sick and in distress may be comforted by those who care for them and encouraged by our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may rest in God's peace, and those who grieve for them may have consolation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to practice living faith by declaring, not mine, over our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to offer our prayer, our diocese and prayer for vocations, which we pray for the Diocese of Duluth, but also uh, for whatever diocese you find yourself in, as we pray. Almighty Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work, and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families, to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each is offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. 
that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and with your glorious martyrs and with all your saints who have done your will, on whose constant intercession and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, our merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you if they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, 
who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. How precious is your mercy, O God. The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings. Psalm 36, verse 8. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, just one quick, maybe two quick announcements um, to the for the virtual front pew. Um, you noticed some new faces maybe in the last couple of weeks, and this is I think the first time Brady has been able to be with us um, on the virtual front pew mass. Um, it's the second time, third time Emmeline has been able to be with us. So um, there are new missionaries on our campus. Brady's a veteran missionary from years and years. That's why his beard game is so strong. Um, and Emmeline is one of, our, one of our first year missionaries. And so all throughout the course of this year, we're going to be blessed um, as a community, as a virtual front pew, to be able to be with Brady and with Emmeline and the other missionaries as well, Neil and Lauren. Um, and also sometimes our students join us, as you know about this already. But I figured an introduction might be helpful because, uh, yeah, we're praying with each other, we're praying for each other, and uh, it's good to know people's names when you're praying for them. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
Solve regina, mater misericordiae, vita dulce do, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filii eve, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, Ilos tuos, misericordes oculos, a nos converte. Et Jesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, post hoc exilium, ostende. Ho, ho, ho,